Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. As you can see from the intro, I had to fly to the USA to make this review of the TCL6 series since it's not available to buy in the United Kingdom where I'm based. In case you are wondering, I really wanted to film this video with the television beside me but I ran out of time after all the testing I did. Also, the lighting wasn't great in the room where the TCL6 series was so please excuse me for filming this video in a totally different location. I hope that you'll still find this video useful. So, the TCL6 series I reviewed was the 55-inch version, model number 55R617. Even though it arrived in a shipping box that said 5 Series S517, I'll be honest, my heart sank when I first opened the door and saw the box because I sure as hell didn't fly all the way to the States to review an <laughs> HLED LED LCD. Fortunately, after assembling and powering up the TV, I saw some blooming around white text on a black background of axis, which is definite evidence of full array local dimming. I checked the label on the TV itself, which stated TCL 55R617, so I'm a happy bunny again. This is what I signed up for. Now, those of you who are already in the States may know the specifications of this television, but for those of you watching who are not from North America, let me tell you why this TV is such a bargain, at least on paper. The 55-inch model features a VA type LCD panel, full array local dimming or FALD, directly LED backlighting, white color gamut, as well as Dolby Vision support all for a price of only 650 bucks. Since the pound is getting pounded because of Brexit, let's suppose that the UK price is 650 pounds. Can I find another 55 inch TV with this sort of specifications in the UK or Europe for 650 pounds? Definitely not at the time I filmed this video in August 2018. But enough about the price, let's check out the design. The chassis is thicker than most HLED LED LCDs you can find on the market, mainly because of the direct LED LED backlighting, but this isn't really a problem for us since we watch TV from the front, not from the sides. The screen is fairly reflective and so is best watched in a dark room. The panel sits on a pair of feet located at both ends of the display, so you'll need a fairly wide AV rack on which to put the television. There's a cute power button on the bottom right corner at the front and the connections are found at the right rear of the TV. There are only three HDMI ports, but at least all three support HDMI 2.0 with HDTP 2.2. As you can see from this micro shot of the subpixel structure, the TCL R617 uses a true RGB VA type LCD panel. However, the TV uses an interesting subpixel rendering that reduces chroma resolution at certain color tones. Here are a couple of photos taken by my eagle-eyed colleague David McKenzie from the Ultra HD Blu-ray of Sally. To be fair, from a normal viewing distance, this isn't a problem for watching movies. But if you are using the television as a PC monitor up close, be warned that you may see a crisscross pattern on certain color tones. One of the first things we do with any FALD LED LCD TV is count the number of local dimming zones and judging from this test pattern where there's a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, there are 16 vertical columns and 6 horizontal rows giving us a total of 96 independently dimmable zones. The implemented local dimming algorithm is not as good as those found on top tier brands such as Samsung and Sony. Quite frequently, the TCL R617 will struggle to decide whether to light up a zone or not, resulting in visible luminance fluctuations. The deepest blacks can be obtained by setting local contrast to high, but unfortunately, this also introduces the most obvious backlight fluctuations. Before talking about colors, I want to spend a bit of time talking about the picture settings because this is the first time I've seen TCL's picture menu. One interesting quirk is that there's a global TV brightness control that goes from darker to dark to normal to bright to brighter, and each progressive step up 
increases the TV's light output. However, from the brief time we had with the television, we found that the TV brightness setting is shared between SDR and HDR on the same input source. For example, let's say you set TV brightness to darker for watching SDR content from HDMI 1 in a dimly lit room. Then, the setting will remain so at darker even during playback of HDR sources, preventing the TV's maximum peak brightness from being delivered. For the greatest HDR impact and more accurate tracking of the perceptual quantization electro-optical transfer function, you will have to manually change the TV brightness setting. Another point of interest is that some of the picture settings, for example, 11-point white balance, color management system, gamma control, and noise reduction control are available only in the Roku mobile app, which, by the way, is very intuitive and easy to use, even if you don't plan to calibrate your TCR R617, which, let's be honest here, not many people will do for a 600 bucks television, you should at least use the mobile app to switch off noise reduction which is enabled by default, reducing fine detail. Should you decide to get your TCL6 series calibrated, you will be rewarded with supremely accurate grayscale and colors for SDR content. The white balance controls on the Roku mobile app is really granular, allowing you to fine tune the RGB adjustments in a precise manner. And the beauty with using the app is that no user menu will appear on screen to disturb your measurements. After calibration, the average data error was only 1.25 on this very challenging color checker SG chart, with none of the 140 measured color patches exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3, so skin tones and other memory colors will look very realistic and natural. Otherwise, the TV is limited to legal video range, and so can't display blacker than black or whiter than white data which is common on budget sets. I wasn't keen on bringing my expensive Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer all the way to the States, and so had to make do with an X1 i1 Pro 2 with lower optical resolution to capture the spectral power of distribution of the TCL6 series. Despite the Minecraft-like graphics, the narrow red peak gives it away as PFS phosphor, Here's a higher resolution SPD chart from a Samsung NU8000 for confirmation. When it comes to motion performance, the TCL 55R617 only uses a 60Hz LCD panel, but we were gobsmacked by how slow panning shots in 24 frames per second movies looked so buttery smooth with no sign of telecynic jitter at all which you would normally expect from a 60Hz screen. After further analysis, it appears that the TCL is refreshing the panel at 48Hz, which of course is double the frame rate of 24Hz, so there's no judder, therefore maintaining cinematic presentation of 24p films. Because the panel is only 60Hz, motion resolution cannot be boosted using frame interpolation beyond the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines, but at least the company has included a backlight scanning option called LED Motion Clarity on the 2018 6 series, which increased motion resolution to 1080 lines, at the expense of introducing some double image ghosting, flickering, and image darkening. The image darkening can be compensated for by increasing the backlight or TV brightness, and I personally don't see much flicker at all except in very bright scenes, but flicker sensitivity do vary from one individual to another, so you may be less tolerant of the flicker than I was. In my opinion, screen uniformity is the biggest Achilles heel of the TCL6 series. When we put up full field gray slides on our review sample, we could see the FALD grid, some dirty screen effect, and darkening of the corners. These uniformity issues may rear their ugly heads if you are into watching sports where there are fast pans across a uniform background, such as football or ice hockey. Next, video processing. Scaling is soft. The TCL didn't present standard def material in a sharp or detailed a manner as the top brands like LG, Samsung, or Sony. But hopefully, you'll be feeding the TV HD or UHD content for the best experience. For HDR, peak brightness measured 850 nits on a 10% window if we selected the TV brightness value that tracked PQUTF most accurately. 
and a whooping 680 nits fulfill, so bright HDR scenes will look impactful. This IP3 color gamut coverage came in at 94%, and because the white balance is shared between SDR and HDR modes on the same input, we couldn't flatten out the grayscale in HDR mode, so colors can look slightly off. This is especially apparent during playback of Dolby Vision content from Netflix, where there's some oversaturation going on. For HDR10 movies, the TCL R617 maintains the same tone curve regardless of content metadata, but at least it resolves up to 4000 nits, thus preserving sufficient specular highlight detail in the movie pan, which is mastered to 4000 nits. That said, by using this sort of static tone curve, there would be some loss of shadow detail in dark scenes, especially in 1000 nit HDR movies, in addition to the usual blooming and luminance fluctuations you'll get from time to time with full array local dimming. With game mode engaged, input lag measured 18 milliseconds using our Leobotna tester, making the TCL6 series one of the most responsive TVs for playing games on the market. To sum up, I just can't get over how good the TCL6 series is for the money. I'm so envious of you people in the States for having access to such good picture quality at such a low price. Here in the UK, if I wanted to buy a TV that can at least match the image provided by the TCL R617, I would have to go all the way up to the Sony XF90 or X900F, which is double the price at around £1,300. In case you are wondering, the reason why TCL TVs in the USA support Dolby Vision and those in the UK and Europe don't is because of the Roku TV chipset optimized for the States. It's got Dolby Vision baked in, but unfortunately it cannot be deployed in the UK and Europe due to content issues. Now, I've reviewed TVs from two Chinese manufacturers, Hisense and TCL, and the difference is night and day, absolutely night and day. TCL understand color accuracy, they understand correct 24Hz motion reproduction, they understand the importance of low input lag for gaming. The company has some very smart engineers on board. This is a brand that I'm sure we'll hear more of over the next few years, and deservedly so. My only complaint is its subpar screen uniformity, which can be easily noticed when watching sports. I wonder if potential buyers would be willing to pay a couple of hundred more for better quality control from TCL in this regard. Nevertheless, the TCL R617 is my favorite budget TV of 2018, delivering phenomenal value for money that puts many big brands to shame. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HTTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.